Hi, everybody, joining us for the Design Your 2014 workshop. Um, this was actually a workshop that was facilitated by one of the CAN coaches, Aaron Hancock, um, on January 15th as part of our um, meetup community. And it was really well received. We had uh, attendance of 30 people in a rather small room, and everybody got really excited about um, designing a 2014 in a different way than we normally would. Um, and since everybody really enjoyed it, uh, we decided to bring it here online. And so we have Aaron with us here today to talk about um, how to design your 2014 and to talk a little bit about um, what she did designing her own plan, which um, I'm sure she's excited to share with us as well. So I will leave it um, to you to get started, Erin. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks, Allison, for putting these together. And it's, uh, it's neat to be able to share this to a broader audience. We did have fun live. But I'm sure we can have fun online as well. So what I'll do is I will walk us through some of the concepts. I'll use PowerPoint as my visual. Is that showing up good, Allison? Yes, yeah, sorry, I just had to unmute okay. myself, but yes, it is showing perfectly. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, thanks. So uh, that's my name, Erin Hancock. I've been a coach uh, since 20, I guess I completed my training in 2012, and I've been working with folks on taking on projects in their life that get them really excited and that bring them the satisfaction that they're looking for. And so uh, I'm, I'm working as a coach with the Center for Applied Neuroscience, and there's a lot of different coaches uh, within the center, and, uh, and this happens to be... Uh, showcasing tonight some of the approaches that I take and how I work with folks. And specifically, it comes up in January because, of course, uh, this is when we're all thinking about resolutions and things that we want to take on and things that we want to change. And I thought we could bring some fresh ideas to that. So we'll jump right into it. So you may have seen this image uh, on the advertising for this event. And really, if not 2014, then when? Basically saying, let's just jump into it. Whatever it is that you want, we don't have to delay. Let's get started today. So this is a highlight a reel of some of the things we're going to talk about tonight. So looking at what does it mean when we say life by design. We'll look at some principles in terms of making resolutions. We'll look at figuring out what it is that you actually want for yourself in 2014. And then this is where I like to get really practical. How is it we're going to make that happen? It's great to have big dreams. How do we really make sure that that's going to come true and that 2014 is going to be the year that we want and that we've designed? And then lastly, we can take any questions. And Allison's taken on a couple of really cool projects in her life recently, actually, and so hopefully we can hear about those as well. So some of the things that this may conjure up when you hear the phrase life by design is that we want to be playful. You know, we want to start from nothing and try something new. We also want to be experimental. We want to be creative. Uh, when you think about designers and the way that they approach the work that they do, it's really about making sure that you integrate lots of different ideas, that you keep functionality in mind, and, uh, and you try to bring something new that wasn't there before. And also, let's start from a blank slate. So a lot of times when we approach resolutions, we sort of start from, what is it that I'm already doing? What is it I don't want to do anymore? Um, what have I already created in my life? But I want us to take time tonight to think about how is it that we can start from a blank slate and really say that anything can be possible. If we start from nothing, then it means that everything is possible. And so it's important for you to take a moment to think what comes to your mind when you hear the phrase, life by design. Is it any of the things that I already mentioned? Is it something completely different? Okay, so let's jump into some principles of making resolutions. So first of all, we want to keep an open mind. We want to make sure that we put anything on the table. Just like doing a brainstorming session with a group of people, you first get everything out and then you apply the filters. Or then you start looking at what the constraints are or what the priorities should be. But first of all, we want to start with an open mind and really get all the ideas on the table. Second, we want to be generous with ourselves. So sometimes we start from that space of constraints. Oh, well, I've only got a certain amount of money. 
and a certain amount of vacation time. And in my job, I don't really have the opportunity for X, Y, and Z. And we start from there, and that kind of limits the possibilities that we can create for ourselves. So what I'm suggesting is that you start from a place of being generous. So really take account of what it is that you, that you have to offer, what it is that you have at your fingertips, the communities that you're involved with, the resources that you might have in your life that you don't always think of as resources, and start from a place of, you know, I'm coming with so much to this table, and I can really create something amazing that gets me excited. Erin, can I pause you there for just a second? Sure. Um, I'm actually noticing that your slides aren't moving through. Um, so I don't know if you want to check that or if you want to um, just um, talk about it and um, then we can maybe um, post something up later as a document so that people can look through it. Okay, so are, am I still on slide one? What are um, you doing? No, actually now you are showing uh, adopt a mindset that is or that anything is possible. Okay. So, so that, I guess, is working now. <laughs> okay. I'll try the next one and see if it works. Are you seeing that now? No. Okay. So we have some type of delay happening, I think. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll keep moving through the visuals with the hope that uh, the Internet catches up with us, <laughs> whatever it is that's happening. Uh, yeah. But for now, I'll assume that folks can't see the visuals, and I will do uh, I'll do a little bit more descriptors. Sounds great. Okay, thank you. So the the second uh, principle that I really want to emphasize, so above and beyond sort of being generous, keeping an open mind, believing that anything is possible as your starting point, um, I, I want us to consider this idea that we shouldn't should on ourselves. And the idea there is that we have lots of internal dialogues about what it is that we feel like we should be doing because of our age, or what we should be doing at this point in our career, or what we should be doing as parents, or as friends, or as caregivers, um, or how much money we should be making by this point in our lives, or how thin we should be. Who knows what it is for you, but we all have these things that run in our minds where we're not exactly inspired. Uh, by them, but they're kind of just lingering there, like, oh gosh, I gotta get to that. And so if we adopt a mindset that we don't have to should, so there's no, where we are right now is absolutely fine, then what it does is it opens up the space for us to then look at what do we want to create. Again, from a place of, of fun and not from a place of attachment or from a place of, oh, I'm not, I'm not there yet. Um, and, and so let's keep that in mind as we as we think about how we want to design 2014. And following that, and you've probably read this uh, before and considered it in different ways as well. And maybe if you're involved in business planning, you thought about it too, but what is our ultimate why? And let's get in touch with that. So when you get up in the morning, what is it that really drives you? What is it that gets you, you know, you want to jump out of bed and get to it? So this is something where your how you take on your life in terms of the job or what activities you're involved with, your pastimes, they may change, you know, they may change every couple months, every couple years, but this is that thing that is underlying everything that you're up to and everything that gets you inspired and excited. So think about it for a minute, what would you consider to be your ultimate why? This would be almost like your your mission statement if you were a business. For me, it's fostering a world that's in communication. So I know that no matter what I do as a wife, as a friend, as a daughter, um, as a coach, as someone who works in community development, um, that no matter what else is happening or what projects I choose to take on at any given time, what's underlying that is really ensuring that there's a lot of really healthy communication between all the parties involved. And lastly, in terms of our principles for resolution making, we want to choose something that genuinely lights you up. So this is, again, if we get away from the shoulds 
and what we think we should be doing right now or what we think we should be up to and we move more to what is it that really gets me excited when I'm doing that I just feel completely light up lit up I've got tons of energy and I'm really attracted to those kinds of opportunities and those kinds of contributions so when we discuss this in person during the live workshop some people talked about dancing and some people talked about dating and others talked about you know really being in sort of those prime situations where they feel like that all their skills are used they get to be social they're learning that kind of thing think about what it is for you that really lights you up it can be lots of things so now moving into um, thinking about defining your desires so we'll, we'll put a link to a handout these are some of the questions that you can start answering when you think about what is it that I really want for myself and my life in 2014 so here's some questions if it was December 31st 2014 what would I feel satisfied about having done So we're looking back on the year, we're saying, yeah, I feel really satisfied that I completed on that, or I tried that, or I, you know, I got a jump start on something. What is that for you? Next is how do I want to experiment with something new? There's so much learning in trying something new and going for something without having to be attached that you'll complete on it or that you'll be the best at it that you'll have you know wild success but really just jumping into something new and seeing what you learn about yourself seeing where you'll surprise yourself what kind of enjoyment you'll get from that so how do I want to experiment with something new the next is how do I want to stretch myself so how do I want to do something that's that's above and beyond something that I've done before or something completely new or something that people would be surprised about if they heard that I did it how do I want to stretch myself and then what areas of my life are currently underexplored so if we think about our lives in terms of the different realms that we occupy so we think about you know our financial lives you think about romance you think about career or learning or social or spiritual you know look at out of all of those and even other ones that you consider to be a big part of your life or a big part of your desired life where do you feel that there are areas that are currently underexplored so is it around your health something about your energy levels or your sleeping where you feel like yeah it's not really on my radar right now or is it something around learning you know you finished university years ago and now you think wow there's there's so much out there that I could in ways that I can expand my mind maybe it's about your finances or your romantic life so the question is what areas of my life are currently underexplored And then lastly, what impact do I want to make this year and for whom? This is really about the contribution that you want to make. And research shows us that that is just a huge source of satisfaction for folks in their lives, the contribution they can make to others. Whether that's giving to folks in small acts of kindness, whether that's serving as a caregiver, whether that's showing gratitude and expressing things to folks in your life, we know that making a contribution is great for others too, of course, but also really, really important to folks in their individual satisfaction. So what impact do I want to make this year and for whom? And now moving into creating a new possibility. And this is really about the principle of starting from a blank slate. So instead of saying yeah I, I kind of feel like I should do more of the same this year you know and even if we're not conscious in that thinking that's often where we are we think okay I typically will stay on the same track that I'm on I might deviate in small ways we'll try to be a little bit 
better at something, I'll do a little bit more of something, a little bit less of something. But for the most part, the probable future is that things will be quite similar to where they are now, unless we have uh, big plans to make shifts, or unless we create something new for ourselves from the space of anything is possible. And this doesn't have to feel totally authentic for you at this very moment, but what we're trying to do is say, okay, what could be possible in these areas of my life? Because I want to kind of play with it and experiment with things being you know, entirely different than they are now. So I've listed a number of different areas of your life, and the exercise is to create a new possibility for each one of them. So you can go ahead and pause the video um, after each one of these and create a new possibility. I'll give you some examples too. So the first one is career. So the new possibility could be to change jobs to a job that has a huge impact on the world, on other people, maybe on a cause that you really care about. Maybe it's about going, you know, for the top of the rung at your business. Maybe it's about making a lateral shift to something that you don't know much about right now. Or maybe it's about going out and being an entrepreneur on your own and giving that a shot. So career is the first one. The second is around learning. So learning could be something big, like enrolling in a program. It could be about a new skill set you want to develop, new competencies that you want to gain. It could be around small things, hobbies that you want to pick up. Maybe people in your life have skills that you're really intrigued by and you want to learn from that. So the new possibility could be you know, expanding your, your knowledge around mathematics. It's not something that you completely grasp right now. The new possibility could be getting a master's degree when that's not something that you thought was possible before. Okay, I'll run through the others more quickly. But again, you can pause and think about the possibility for yourself. Finances, romance, social, leisure, physical, spiritual. So around spirituality, it could be something about developing a daily practice. It could be about, you know, exploring different faith communities to see if there's a place where you naturally would fit. Um, then there's family, and there could be other ones that you identify too in terms of different realms of your life. The idea here is that you want to create a new possibility that gives you the space to kind of say, oh, things could be, things could be different, or things could be kind of amazing, or I could try things that I haven't tried before in these different realms. So now let's get down to the tools. So how is it that we make this happen? So now that we've done this work, where we've looked at, okay, we're giving ourselves lots of space to create new possibilities and to, to think about what our true desires are, what we really want for ourselves, and we're keeping an open mind. Then now that we kind of land on a few of them, how is it that we're going to implement these in our life? So let's get down to the tools. So I love talking to people about habits because it's something that allows us to have novelty at the beginning as we're developing them and then ease after. Because once something is just part of our daily routine, that it's really easy for us to keep that up. Constantly having novelty or going on and off of different regimens and that kind of thing is a lot more challenging. Neurologically, uh, it takes a lot more energy for us to facilitate as opposed to doing something regularly, habitually, that kind of thing. So the other thing about habits is that small consistent changes over time then this can often have a larger impact than trying to make a big change all at once. And the reasons why is because often we face less resistance to change when we consider small habits. Um, they are all also easier to integrate into our life than big changes um, because there's something that we can attach onto other um, existing, you know, our schedule, our routine, our habits, other things that we already have in our lives, we can actually sort of um, attach new habits onto those. And also, the changes are often more sustainable when it's, when it's smaller and consistent over time. The next thing about a tool that you can use is to communicate and declare what it is that your goals are, 
What is it that you've created for yourself, the new opportunity, the new possibility? And you want to be really specific about this and get in communication with the people in your life about what you're up to. First and foremost, the people that you know would be interested, so whether that's the people that care about you uh, or whether it's people in your life that you know care about the thing that you're trying to get up to. So if there's marathon runners in your life and you have a goal around running a 5K, you know, then you want to make sure to tell them about that and get them to be a champion for you and get them to give you tips and build a community around it. So first of all, declare it and be really specific about what you're looking for. The next is building on that concept of developing your community. So have people around you that are going to hold you to account. There are going to be resources that are going to say, you said you wanted, we're totally a stand for you having it. And then we want to identify challenges before we meet them to figure out our plan. How is it that we're going to deal with them when they come up? So we want to ask ourselves, where will we get hung up and how will we handle it? So if it's something around finances and you know that you're someone that's a big impulse spender and that that's getting a little bit out of control in your life and your new possibility is that you have a clean and clear budget and that you're actually saving money every month, then you try to figure out, okay, where do I get hung up? Is it going out with friends? Is it when I'm out drinking or dancing? Is it when I go to the mall? You know, is it when I, I'm paying attention to these different ticket sales and so I want to go to a different event every week? So figure out where is it that you often get hung up. And then figure out how you want to handle it. So if it's around your budgeting, maybe you want to say, okay, I'm going to eat out twice this month. I'm going to go to one event a month or a quarter. Um, that's maybe a bigger event, costs a little bit more. I'm going to take one trip a year. And you make a bit of a plan ahead of time. That could be one way that you could handle that. Um, or you could find ways to make more money so that you allow yourself to have the finer things in life that you're looking for without having to compromise your financial goals too. So there's always a couple different ways of approaching it. But the idea is to figure out where is it that you're going to hit those roadblocks and where you might fall into your old habits and then plan to deal with it so you can overcome it this time. This is one of my favorites, <laughs> getting things into space and time. And this is the idea that if we can get things into our calendars, into our existing schedules, into our existing routines, um, and we're really specific about what those goals are and what the ac actions and the activities are that lead to those goals, then we start mapping them out in time to figure out that if we're going to run this 5K within a couple months, well, where do we have to be today? What kinds of tools do we need? How much training do we need? And that kind of thing. And then we want to be intentional um, about making these plans. So not just saying, yeah, I would love to take a big trip this year. And then, you know, if we, if we don't make any plans to save money, we don't make any plans to uh, kind of look at flights and book them, book off the vacation, whatever it is we need to get there, then that time, that opportunity might pass us back. The idea is that we plan for it well in advance. And that we get started early enough that we give ourselves time. So if we want to host a huge party this summer, and we know that we need to get a venue and get a whole bunch of things lined up, then we want to give ourselves time so we can set ourselves up for success. And then set checkpoints for yourself in your calendar. So if you want to do something in July, and you know that things need to be booked by March, we want to set checkpoints between now and March to make sure that we're getting the information that we need so when March rolls around we can make those decisions, set those things up without feeling too much pressure. This one's fun. Establish rewards. So think about as we reach those milestones along the way and we're actually in line with what it is that we want, how are we going to celebrate? So are there people in your life that you want to celebrate with? Maybe they're up to the same thing that you're up to. Are there things that you consider to be treats or ways that you can acknowledge yourself for the good work that you're doing? To so figure out what your rewards will be that will keep you motivated and on track. And then the question is to you. Think about other things that you've done in your life um, that have really made... Uh, brought success to you. So when you set a new goal, what is it that really works? 
So is it rewards for you? Is it planning? Is it getting a buddy involved? You know, think about where in the past you've set a goal, you've achieved something, you had fun along the way, and what were the tools that you put into place to make that so? So this is what uh, Allison was mentioning, my Chapter 30 project. So this year is my year of being 30. And what I've done is I've actually set goals, um, numbered 1 through 30, uh, and have, uh, have set a lot of different things in my life that I'd like to achieve. And this is really the concept of designing from nothing. I said, what are the things that light me up? What are the things that get me excited? How can I stretch myself? Um, how can I get a community around me and try something new? And so I'll share with you the 30 goals that I set. So the first is to become fluent in one language. I'm working at that every day. I want to take two courses. That has to do with my learning goals. I want to give up three things. For me, it's television, swearing, and clutter. And I'm working on all of those things right now. Give it up television immediately. Swearing, I'm almost there. It's been about seven days now <laughs> with absolutely no swearing. And uh, and with clutter, I'm, I'm on a major cleanse. I've digitized my life. Um, then I want to undertake feats of the mind, like memorizing all the countries of the world. I want to try to speak physical experiences. So I'm a little bit nervous about heights, so it's going to have to involve heights in some way. Maybe paddle boarding, doing some different things. Um, then taking on seven acts of self-expression. So, so far, um, actually running the workshop last week was one of them. Writing a letter to the editor was another. Might be uh, performing in a poetry slam by the end of the year, something like that. And I want to do some outdoor excursions. So something like uh, doing snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, hiking, these kinds of things. Singing in public nine times. 10 sunrises and 11 sunsets, learning some party tricks. So that's kind of a legacy thing you might say. I want to pick up some neat skills this year that I can keep throughout my life and remember, oh yeah, it was when I was 30 that I learned that. I want 13 people in my life to take on challenges too. So far, we're, I'm almost at 13. Lots of people want to take things on and have support. Take part in 14 celebrations. Museums, 16 acts of pure joy. So far I attended an improv night. Um, had a lot of fun, these kinds of things. Uh, learning 17 chords on guitar, connecting with 18 new people, taking on 19 acts of gratitude, trying 20 new foods, running 21 kilometers, so doing a half marathon this year, 22 acts of kindness to others, trying 23 new recipes. I love cooking. I hardly ever set aside time to do it. This year I am. Taking 24 naps. Learning a phrase in 25 languages. Having two with friends 26 times. Trying 27 new restaurants. Reading 28 books. Watching 29 films. And going vegan for 30 days. So when I first started this, I, uh, I wanted to do it like that, sort of in the way that 12 days of Christmas is numbered. So um, not just 30 goals, but um, 30 goals, 29 goals, 28, 27, and so forth. And I didn't realize until after I'd written it that it actually adds up to 465 goals. So that's more than one a day. So I really did uh, take on a pretty good challenge this year. But so far, I'm having fun achieving it. So then I set up a blog as part of my uh, idea to declare it and to build my community. So at uh, Aaron does chapter 30. Dot wordpress com. I set up a blog so folks can follow along and make comments and that kind of thing too. So that's what it looks like. And that's, uh, that's my presentation. That's my ideas to contribute to you, to have you have a really memorable year, a year that lights you up, and a year that, that you create from nothing that ends up being a really memorable one, I hope. So thanks, Allison. Thank you, Erin. That was really great. Um, I ha have been really inspired by your workshop, and um, so have a lot of other people, I think, um, as is apparent by the, um, 
the big um, uh, feedback that we got from the workshop itself. Um, I wanted to kind of just um, touch on your project a little bit. Um, if you don't mind, I'm actually just going to screen share here. And um, I'm actually just showing your site here um, with your project. So this shows the whole list, which upon hearing it, I thought was crazy ambitious. <laughs> um, but knowing you, I know that you will get it done. <laughs> um, Thanks. So, it's good to have support. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you're, you're creating this whole community around it through this blog um, to help you succeed. And I just wanted to kind of um, touch base on that a little bit and just kind of ask you, um, uh, I guess a few questions. So first off, what do you think is going to be the most challenging item on your list to oh, complete? Goodness. Whew. Well, I know that French is the big one, learning becoming fluent in a new language. Uh, partly because it's, I mean, there's so many, there's so much practice needed to get there. So it's so, so consistently that I need to be working at it in order to get there. Also, sort of overcoming that feeling of being willing to try it with knowing I'm not perfect, knowing it might sound a bit bizarre at the beginning, and, and being okay with being in the experimental phase of something. Um, I that's, that's probably the biggest one, and I'm working away at it a little bit every day, actually. Yeah, I saw that you have a lot of support around that, too, where you're you know, um, practicing it at work and um, you're actually using some tools as well to, to help you learn. I, I guess you have a program or something that I saw on your, mm. on your site that you're using for that. That's right, um, yeah, there's a free website. There's free everything. I mean, I, oh, love, yeah. I love the internet. I love how small the world is. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. My my brother actually learned a language through Rosetta Stone as well, and he found that really helpful. Um, but yeah, there's all kinds of resources out there if you're, you know, able to take the time to go and check it out. Um, what do you think is the one item that you're probably most excited to do? Ooh, great question. Well, I'd say visiting four new places. Yeah. Um, I know that traveling is lots of people's favorite thing. Um, I definitely am in that camp, uh, and my first one coming up is actually I booked a trip to Panama in two weeks, so that's the first one. I can't wait to go. Um, I have lots of ideas for the following three, <laughs> and we'll see what they end up being as the year progresses, but uh, I'd say that would probably be the most fun. I can imagine. That's kind of the, the kind of big pieces, I would say. Um, those, and, those are also the things that kind of punctuate time, you know. Yeah. So if I look back on a year, you remember the new places you've been. Absolutely. Um, the other question that I had was, what do you find people are responding to the most on your blog? Ooh. Uh, I recipes, oddly, kind <laughs> of everything that they could uh, comment on recipes, and also acts of kindness. I find that really brings the community together, even if they they seem like small little things. People really get jazzed and touched by that. So, um, yeah. So those are a couple of things. There are also things that I've been up to. There are some things I haven't got up to much yet, like uh, museums learning guitar. Maybe once I get onto those, we'll get some response too. We'll see. Yeah, I'm not too surprised about the food because, I mean, there's so many foodies out there that I could see that that would be a big one. I love that you yeah. include the failures. <laughs> <laughs> I do. You know, not everything. It's, it's kind of, um, it, it just kind of makes me feel good that, you know, Everybody doesn't always have it together all the time, and every time you try something new, it doesn't turn out perfect. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I love that you show how you're kind of <laughs> yeah, you're kind of rolling with the punches. Yeah. I love that, um, and I love that you're trying the new foods as well. And there's some crazy wild stuff on there. <laughs> Not always good choices. <laughs> But you're right, the acts of kindness are, are definitely very touching. I read those as well, and it, it, was, uh, it was definitely very touching. 
Um, I think that your process is really great, and I love you know how you go about it and this kind of whole idea of really designing something that lights you up versus you know focusing on your shoulds and creating a plan that's destined to fail because you're not really passionate about it. You're just following what you know you think you should be doing. That's right. Um, and I, I like how you're. I really like your you know getting it into space and time. Um, I think is key, and um, I use that in in my practice as well a lot. Is is really kind of trying to map things out to make sure that they do happen. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, I, I thank you for sharing that, and and we will definitely get those resources up there as well, um, right. so that people can can follow along. Um, another thing that I wanted to kind of show people as well, um, if I can, oh, maybe it won't let me screen share it again, but I. I will um, put up the link to it as well, but we have a meetup community and um, we have a discussion forum on there um, that I've created for designing your 2014. Um, so I thought that that would be a great way to get people together to kind of talk about um, what they're doing for the year and to create this kind of community around accountability um, and excitement. So if anybody wants to kind of post their um, plans for the year, uh, we'd certainly encourage you to do that there. And I, like I say, I'll post the link for it. Um, and I will share you with you, I have designed my own plan. <laughs> Ooh, let's hear it. So th this is the first time that I'm sharing it and um, I will be starting my own um, kind of mini blog. Uh, I'm not as ambitious as Aaron is. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know if ambitious is the right word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe as insane. <laughs> um, but I was really inspired and I thought I should really make my own plan and kind of um, look into some stuff myself. Especially where I've just recently transplanted into a new area. So this is my plan for 2014. Um, I plan on learning about one new spiritual practice. Um, I'm actually uh, interested in learning about um, spiritual practices in general, um, but I think I want to explore um, Wiccan um, practices this year, and because um, I don't really know a whole lot about it, and I think it would be interesting. So that is um, my one. Um, I'm actually I've doubled up on all the numbers, and it's kind of my top ten. So um, I'm doing that and playing one instrument which is to relearn the flute. Um, I used to play um, quite a bit when I was younger and was part of a couple of different bands and stuff, so I want to get back to that. Um, I want to take two right. courses, um, actually likely photography in the spring, uh, and then I'll see about the other one. I want to go to two com um, conventions or conferences um, the next one coming up is the big yoga conference in March, um, which I'm really excited about. Um, I want to learn three new software. Um, I am a very, those who know me know that I'm a very um, techy person and really enjoy kind of playing in that world. So um, I have a few that are on my computer that I haven't really taken the time to learn and um, want to take some time to do that. Um, one of which is actually an animation software, so that should be really fun and it'll be interesting for me to kind of post up some of those um, playing, which, like your recipes, may work out and may not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to establish three new regular places. I know that kind of sounds weird, but like, I'm in a new place and I don't really have my regulars anymore and sometimes I crave that, you know, when I used to live in Halifax for, you know, 16 years, and so, you know, we had our regular places we used to go, and so I want to start to establish some new ones here. Um, I want to master four new hairstyles. Um, again, those who know me know that I love to look up new hairstyles, and I know probably 10 different types of braids. <laughs> So it'll be actually kind of challenging for me to find four that I don't already know. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I want to finish four books, um, which for me, again, is a big thing because I have probably about eight unfinished ones. 
I feel that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that finished part is the key. When I saw your list, how many books are you doing this year? 28. <laughs> <laughs> that just blew my mind. I was like, no. <laughs> Mine too, yeah. Yeah, so uh, so I, I'm really anxious to see how you get along with that one. <laughs> um, I want to go to five yoga or meditation classes and do five acts of neighborly kindness. Um, uh. One of which, I, I part of this is actually spurred by the fact that our neighbor gets up super early and she's always shoveling the driveway before us. Um, unless it snows during the day, then I get to sc scurry out there and shovel before she gets out there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so part of that will be my gratitude. Um, and uh, experience, I took one from you. Experience six sunrises and six sunsets. Oh, good. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that was a good one. Um, and do seven acts of physical wellness and Ooh. seven acts of mental wellness. Wow, that's but, very cool. Yeah, I thought that's better than like you know committing to like exercise so many times a day or, <laughs> or, you know, times a week or whatever. Like to to be able to look at it from a different light and. Um, you know, part of that is, you know, for me will be probably establishing a new network of alternative care professionals because um, I used to do that, you know, back home. And so um, now that I'm in a new place, kind of finding out what's here. I know one of the things I definitely want to try is Thai yoga massage. So that mm -hmm. will definitely be on there. Um, Great. I want to, yeah. <laughs> um, have you had that? I I don't know a massage. I have had a Thai massage where she basically threw me over her shoulder. It's pretty memorable. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. <laughs> well, you'll get to hear about what this one's like. <laughs> um, do t uh, eight acts of gratitude and play eight um, games because um, I'm a big... Uh, gamer, so that will be fun. Um, and that actually kind of plays into, um, I haven't announced it yet, but um, on my own um, YouTube site, I plan on developing a playlist um, for nurturing uh, creativity through gaming. Um, so that will be, that kind of plays into that probably as well. So um, I want to talk to nine new people. Um, and do nine home projects, um, which I'm, I'm, that's probably going to be a challenging one for me as well. <laughs> okay. But we'll see how that goes. Um, I want to support ten crowdfunding campaigns. Wow. Um, yeah, so that's something that I thought about for my business as well. I was going to do that anyway, was um, to kind of feature a crowdfunding project um, a month kind of thing. So mm -hmm. that kind of falls in there for, for me to be able to kind of, you know, look through and see what's going on and, and support the, um, you know, creative projects that are happening. So I think that'll be really fun. Mm -hmm. um, and then have 10 afternoon teas because I love tea as well. So. That is my top 10 list. <laughs> wow, that is Cool. I love it because there are all these things that you can tell you're instantly drawn to. You just can't wait or it's things that you remember you enjoyed and now you're adding it back in. And then there's these things that you're stretching yourself a little bit on. And yeah, I really love it. I mean, it's, it's really cool ideas. Well, I really thank you for giving me the idea. So I'm, uh, I'm excited and hope that we can kind of, um, you know, uh, keep each other in line and make sure that we make it all happen. So Absolutely. <laughs> I'll be following you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, um, I, I'm actually, I was just trying to kind of start the blog um, as I was, as the event was starting and so I didn't get to actually publish it yet, but um, I will post the link for that as well in case uh, anybody wants to, you know, follow me and make sure that I'm following through as well, so. <laughs> you can get involved. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So you can count me in as somebody else who um, is is uh, doing right. challenges. 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll link to your blog. I love it. Yeah. Right on. Thank um, you. And this all kind of reminded me about, you know, in 2012, um, when I was living in the Halifax, I did a 30-day mm -hmm. challenge, which I called my social invigoration project. Um, so it was trying to get me out more and um, into the community. And, you know, so I, I did a vlog um, about uh, doing 30 um, ex outdoor or, like, um, social excursions um, in 30 days. So it was it, it was quite intense and uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, so and they were so different. I actually just watched some of your videos last week, and I just thought, what a neat idea! <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We, I did so many different things, and like I just I had no idea that half of that stuff was going on. So um, it was pretty cool to kind of get out there and and see what's out there. So uh, there might be a revitalization of of that at some point as well. Um, I think I have a lot of projects on the go for this year, so maybe not, but maybe 2015, that'll be part of my thing, is to do the uh, social invigoration project again. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, well hopefully thanks. there's folks on the that want to take this on too, right? Yeah. And see what's there for them that gets them lit up. Exactly, exactly. So I really look forward to seeing what um, all of you guys um, do for your 2014 and uh, hopefully you'll post, um, you know, whether it's on our Google Plus page or um, on the YouTube channel or um, on our blogs. So, um, you know, we, we really look forward to you connecting with us and letting us know what you're doing. So, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Aaron, for joining us. Um, if you like this video, remember to like, share, and subscribe for more videos like this. And have a fantastic and inspired day. Thanks.